Hi everyone, it's Jessica and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how I made a really easy DIY drip system for my tomato plant, as well as the DIY plant cage I made to go with it. Some really quick background information before we get started. For those who are unaware, a drip system is actually a type of hydroponic system where the nutrient solution is directly dripped onto your plants through small emitters. This is just one of several different types of hydroponic systems that exist. I talk about the four other popular ones in my hydroponics walkthrough video, so you can check that out too. And with that, we can get started on the actual video. So the first thing I did was gather all of my materials. I'll label and list them here on the screen right now, but I'll be going more in depth on each of the parts in a few moments. And as always, everything I use in this video will be linked down below in the description box for you to check out later. There are a couple of different parts I need in order to make this drip system work. The first is a bucket. This one that I'm using is a standard 5 gallon one, I think. And this will act as the pot for my tomato plant that the entire system is going to be inside of. Then I have this green plant tray. It's called a plant saucer. And that will go about halfway into my bucket. You technically don't need this part, but I think it does help in separating the plant roots from the water reservoir so that you have a drip system with water coming down the roots instead of possibly having a system where the roots just sit in the water when they get long enough. And then I also have this um, black bucket basket, which is basically a way bigger version of the net pots that you use in hydroponic system. And it's going to attach to the rim of the bucket and hang a couple inches above the plant saucer. Now that you have a rough idea of how it's supposed to look, we can focus on how to construct it. In order to make this into a functional drip system, I'll have to drill holes in both the plant saucer and the bucket basket so that the wiring and tubing of the water pump can be inserted inside. So here I'm just marking the back of the plant saucer with a sharpie at the points where I want to drill. There will actually be two different drill bit sizes that I use. The first will be for the water pump's tubing and the electrical cord, so make sure that whatever drill bit size you choose to use, that it's large enough for both the tube and the head of your electrical cord to pass through. I made the mistake of making the hole too small at first, so I did have to go back after I took this video to drill again and enlarge it. This hole that I'm drilling right now will be the only one of this size. The remaining holes you make can be much smaller since those are just for water to flow down through. If you want your plant's roots to stay above this level though, I would make those holes pretty small. And in my case, I made seven of these really small holes around the plant saucer. The next thing I did was add these two zip ties, which required me to drill two extra holes so that they could loop around and form hooks. I added these because I thought they'd be helpful and act as something my fingers could grab onto and pull up at for when I wanted to see the water pump or water underneath, but I actually ended up not really needing them because I realized that it was actually easier to just push down on one side of the plant saucer and dislodge it the entire thing that way, so this is actually totally optional. For now, that's it for the plant saucer. We can now move on to drilling the bucket basket. For this part, you only need to drill one hole big enough for the tube. I use the same larger drill bit I used for the plant saucer to do this. The only thing you may want to pay attention to is where you drill, but only if you want the holes to line up with one another so that your tube can take the shortest route possible and travel straight up. But it's not really a big deal if they're slightly off from each other. The size of this hole doesn't actually have to be this big either because I decided to make a separate slit on the side for my cord to pass through. You can make the hole big enough to fit both the cord and the tube if you wanted them to come out from the same spot, but I think having the separate little bit for the cord makes it look slightly more clean.
Now that the plant saucer and the basket are ready, I can start trying to assemble them together inside the bucket. I realized here that my plant saucer is actually a bit too large to fit into my bucket, so here I am just marking and cutting down on the diameter so that it matches the diameter of the bucket's halfway point. Before I put the plant saucer and basket into the bucket, I actually painted the outside of the bucket black, save for a small vertical strip down the side. I did this because my bucket's going to be sitting in the sun most of the day, and the black will prevent sunlight from coming in and thus algae from being produced. The unpainted strip, however, will allow me to see the current water level in my bucket at all times, and help me see when I need to refill the bucket without having to take apart my entire system to see inside. With that all painted and complete, this is me actually putting everything together. The first thing I did was fill up my bucket with the desired amount of water, which is a little more than one third of the bucket. Then I mixed in the nutrient solution. After that, I was ready to put my parts in. First, the small water pump attached to a lawn tube went inside the water. Then I strung the electrical cord and tube through the hole I made in my plant saucer earlier. As you can see, the hole has to be big enough to fit in the head of the cord. After I pulled all of my wiring and tubing through, I pushed the plant saucer into place, about halfway into the bucket a height that I had previously marked with a sharpie. This was a pretty tight fit, which is really good, because it ensures that it won't slip or fall out easily. After I was satisfied with that, I brought in the bucket basket. I looped the tubing through the large hole I had made earlier, and slipped the electrical cord onto the side where I had made the small gap. Then I click the lid into place. Now that my drip system is all set up, I can add in my tomato plant. This is the tomato plant I bought. It came in a pot of dirt, so here I am just using some hose water to wash off that dirt from the roots so that I'm left with clean, bare roots ready to go into my hydroponic system. This is what it should look like after being cleaned. Now I can go back to my bucket and put on the finishing touches. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the tubing to my desired height and connect a wide tubing connector to its end. This is just an extra measure I'm taking to ensure that all sides of the plant are getting water, not just one side. After I push that firmly inside, I connect two shorter strands of that same tube to the ends of the wide connector so that they can wrap around the base of the plant. Then, I connect those ends to two right angle connectors, which will ensure that the water drips down to the roots, instead of possibly facing too high and going out of the bucket. Next, I fill the bucket with my clay pebbles and put my plant inside, covering it with more pebbles so that it is sitting up snugly.
With that, my drip system is up and ready. Along with the actual hydroponics drip system itself that I wanted to build, I also decided to make my own plant cage support stand using PVC pipes. This part is totally optional since you can find these pretty cheaply in stores and online. I'm building my own mostly because the ones I have are not large enough for my plant and won't stand very well on their own. This is actually pretty simple, I'm just building a standard rectangular prism using PVC pipes. In these next few clips, you'll see me cutting the PVC pipes to size and connecting them together with either PVC elbows or tees. You'll also notice that instead of making one big rectangular structure, I have PVC pipes in the middle that break up its height so that the tomato plant has some support as it's growing taller. With the structure complete, we are all done. That's basically 
basically all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please like, comment, and share this video, and subscribe to my channel if you like this content and want to see more. I wanted to quickly say that I've had this system up and running for a few weeks now, I think almost a month, and it's doing really well. The roots are actually really white and they look really healthy and strong, so if you're trying out the system, I would highly recommend it. Um, so yes, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!